I think um I think the way that I've been able to like internalize what he said but then also be like also disagree with it is like that particular word that he uses as humanity like I don't think that humanity as a whole requires anti-blackness but I think that this society requires anti-blackness maybe in if we create a whole different society like maybe in that world we won't need it but um yeah I I don't know it's because it's just like saying humanity as a whole just says that this is inescapable and then that's just like completely daunting and just like our strides to create a different world and somewhere better is just like completely useless you know and I don't know I just refuse to believe that <laughs> yeah he does say that like he does say like the uh, um a way to get rid of anti-blackness and for afro-pessimism to be like a bad theory would be like the end of everything as we know it and I think he makes a good point there um because like I can't honestly and I hate to say it but I can't honestly see things changing um, at least not as quickly as I would like, at least not in my lifetime, maybe my great, great, great grandkids. But I mean, that's like, what, hundreds of years from now. But I just think like, as a society in general, like it just, I just can't see a world without anti-Blackness. And even if anti-Blackness was, um, and even if like white supremacy was to like, and like, I still feel like we would still be dealing with the effects. And that's another thing I, I always thought about. Growing up in a group like the Nation of Islam, we were always told that like economic wealth and opportunity and like land of our own would be a way to like get, escape white supremacy, escape uh, oppression. But now I look back on it and I'm like, and I always think about this, we could, Black people could have their own land, their own economic wealth. And I think the effects of white supremacy and anti-Blackness is still gonna be there, to be honest. Because we see it within the Black community. Like the Black community is, um, like we don't agree on everything and that's that's naturally gonna happen. But certain aspects of like white supremacy are very entrenched in there. And like, if you study the history, it's just like, it's sad to think about, but it makes sense. Like certain things, we still have to deal with colorism. We still have to deal with trans misogyny. We still have to deal with misogynoir, all kinds of like everything just. So I think like, um, that's the thing. Like, I don't think there's an absolute answer to like black liberation at the moment, but it's just like, it's just about like finding things out, studying different theories, looking up what could work. But what are some of the things you guys think could like, we could do as a community not to uh, um, automatically get black liberation because that's, I mean, like that is the end goal, but like some things we could do right now to like help ourselves and sustain us as a community or some of the things you think. I will say um, definitely just like, okay, one, I would say like theoretically we have to understand that like, um, especially in terms of what he, uh, of what Wilderson said in his book, um, he has like the source certain like focus on time and how like even when we were chattel like we're still on that plantation and um, I think that's extremely necessary like everything that we do is like that has happened in the past and everything we do now is like continuously affecting us um and mediating the way that we interact we, with each other mediating the world the way that the world um just like develops as a whole but um I will say that like even though I don't necessarily think that we're going to be liberated ever. Um, I think that community work is the main way towards that, if you believe so. Um, I think that like the world and the systems that exist have never, will never prioritize us. Um, but together, perhaps we can prioritize each other and sharing the things that we have and sharing these theories and material objects is perhaps the most beautiful way of creating our own world. I think to jump off of that, um, I think another thing that's really important, especially right now, is mutual aid. Um, I think mutual aid is very helpful for the Black community because we are one of the most neglected groups in this country. So, you know, a lot of times the disparity between getting help from the government is much worse than everybody else. So I think um, redistributing money in our own community is very important. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, most Black people do not have any kind of generational wealth. 
Um, you know, most of us either we grew up poor ourselves or our parents did, and we were like happened to be like the first generation. Our parents were the first generation to like really gain any like wealth, and like it's wealth that's like minuscule in comparison to the majority of white people in this country. So I think that um, a more community centered approach to you know economics and finances would be um um is a very important thing to me um because we're conditioned to view capitalism as a way for black people to progress even though in my opinion <laughs> um black people never progress under capitalism because we were the first capital and we are still capital so i don't think we'll ever see any real success because it doesn't serve us um in it shows in the way that we have black celebrities that do not care to help their own people. Um, so I think that, um, like you were saying about the um, land, uh, or Miriam, you were saying about land and um, you know having your own community. I think that is important, but like Fran said, we're still on the plantation, so yeah. no matter where we choose to um set our ground or you know make our communities we're still gonna have to deal with the effects of white supremacy even if we try to repatriate it back to africa white supremacy has done a number on africa so it's like there's so much work that needs to be done in order for us to even convene together because i think like you said even if we get rid of white supremacy in an institutional level it is also a psychological thing. So there's so much like <laughs> ideological, I guess, um, aftermath that you have to deal with, even if we're no longer being oppressed by institutions, that is still gonna take a while. Um, we still, you know, there's so many issues within black the black community that aren't properly addressed right now, um, or when they are brought up in conversation, it doesn't really lead to anything productive. So um, I think even there that like just conversations and understanding of um, how capitalism affects us through white supremacy, I think that would be really important for our community in general. Yeah, I think personally, that's one of the reasons why even though I grew up like kind of like a black nationalist, as they would say, I think that's the reason I kind of left black nationalism towards more pan-Africanism in a sense, because I feel like the thing with black nationalists is they're like, we're going to get land, we're going to get money, we're going to get wealth. And it's like, OK, that that's nice. Don't get me wrong. But number one, capitalism doesn't exist without an inequality. So even if a bunch of you niggas got rich, <laughs> there's still going to be some people who are poor. And number two is like you were, like I was just saying, like we were all saying, um, white supremacy can still exist within just like an all black society. And also another good thing you talked about with mutual aid that just reminded me of like grassroots because you, I feel like you should always, organ, always organize where you live and where you, um, the area you're in. Because like, I understand there's a need for an international and a national movement, but I just think like, things need to start off small you can help your next door neighbor help a homeless person help someone who's close to you you don't have to go and necessarily um go all across the country to really do something yeah i would just say um you know related to what you were saying that uh, yeah, you have to have the because white supremacy is all around and it's everywhere and you have to have a level of like self-determination a level of understanding of oneself beyond in a world as if it weren't there, you know, so that um, we can imagine those things for people that will come after us or create things or operate in spaces as though we don't have these barriers in front of us for the people that will, you know, hopefully uh, it, be living in a time without it. And so, uh, you know, there's artists who came before us, there's uh, writers and researchers and doctors and, you know, people of different uh, fields of expertise that show other people uh, different ways to push the envelope that go, you know, generation to generation to generation to generation until, you know, that sort of 
end of it all that Wilderson was talking about comes to about. 